Hello friends, welcome to Quick Learn website and I am very excited to inform you that in Quick Learn I have recently launched my website that is www.quick-learn.in This website is especially for all the engineering and diploma students and those students who will preparing for competitive exams. So, in the blog section of the website, you can find the notes of all the electrical and electronic subjects just like basic electronics, microcontroller, microprocessor, power electronics and slowly slowly I will add more notes in the website. And if you are preparing for any government competitive exams, then check also my MCQ series that is multiple choice question series and previous year question papers that will help you in your competitive exams. Here I also upload the quiz test or mock test for ONGC, UPPCL or for different type of competitive exam previous year question papers. Or for latest update, please join my telegram channel. The link of my telegram channel I will give in my description box. So stay continue and keep watching and keep visiting my website. Hello friends, welcome to Quick Learn tutorial series. In this video, I will explain you single phase full bridge inverter with resistive load. This is lecture number 36 of power electronic series. So let's start with the topic. Here we study about single phase full bridge voltage source inverter where we use resistive load. So this is the circuit diagram of single phase full bridge inverter. Here we use 4 thyristor T1, T2, T3, T4. These thyristor are work as a power semiconductor switching device. So in place of this thyristor we also use uh, some other power semiconductor switching device just like IGBT or power MOSFET. So here we use 4 power semiconductor switching device T1, T2, T3 or T4. And we also use 4 feedback diode D1, D2, D3 or D4. These diode is connect in anti parallel with thyristor. So here we connect D1 diode in anti parallel with T1 thyristor. D2 diode in anti parallel with T2 thyristor, D3 diode in anti parallel with T3 thyristor, or D4 diode in anti parallel with T4 thyristor. Now, come at the source side. We know that the input of the inverter is DC power supply. So, here with the help of this battery, we provide DC power supply to the inverter. So, Vs is the supply voltage. Now, come at the load side. Here we use resistive load because here we study single phase full bridge voltage source inverter with resistive load. So here we use resistive load and we know that the behavior of the circuit is totally depend upon the type of load we use. Now here we study the behavior of the single phase full bridge inverter when we use resistive load. So uh, here we see that the resistive load is connected between two point, point A and B. And we considered that when current flow from point A toward B, it means in this direction, the current is to be considered as positive. And what about the polarity of output voltage? If A is positive with respect to B, the output voltage is also considered as positive. Now to understand the operation of the circuit here we consider that this is the total time period t this total time period t is divided into two equal half this is 0 to t by 2 time interval here we see this is 0 to t by 2 time interval and this is the t by 2 to t time interval so the total time period t is divided into two part 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 to T. Now here we also draw the output voltage and output current waveform. So let's start. First is mode 1. The time interval of mode 1 is 0 to T by 2. It means this time interval. Here we see in this time interval we provide triggering pulse to thyristor T1 or T2. When we provide triggering pulse or firing pulse to thyristor T1 or T2, T1 and T2 get turned on and behave like a closed switch. T1 is behave like a closed switch. Same time, we provide triggering pulse to T2 thyristor also. So it is also get turned on and behave like a closed switch. 
This time T3 and T4 thyristor is turned off. It means they are behave like a open switch. Now current flow from supply voltage. We know that current always flow from positive terminal toward negative terminal. So current follow the path supply voltage T1 thyristor load T2 thyristor and back to the supply voltage. It means current follow this loop. Here we see across the load current flow from A toward B in this direction. And this is the reference direction of current flow. So previously we have considered that if current flow from A toward B the current is positive. Now what about the output voltage? In this case A terminal is positive with respect to B because we know that current always flow from positive toward negative. So current flow from A toward B so A is positive with respect to B. Output voltage is also positive and equal to the supply voltage because overall supply voltage appear across the load. So now we draw the output voltage and output current waveform. First we draw the output voltage waveform. So the time interval 0 to T by 2 output voltage is positive and equal to the supply voltage Vs. So in this way we draw the output voltage waveform that is equals to Vs. In this time interval T1 and T2 thyristor will be turn on. Now what about the output current? In this time interval output current is also positive because current flow in reference direction. So output current is also positive. But what is the magnitude of output current? We know that I is equals to V upon R. The magnitude of current is Vs by R. So in this time duration the output current and output voltage both are positive. Now mode second. The mode second time interval is T by 2 to T. So this is the time interval of mode second. T by 2 to T. In this time interval we remove gate pulse from thyristor T1 and T2. So T1 and T2 thyristor will be turned off and behave like a open switch. T1 and T2 is behave like a open switch this time because we remove gate pulse. And we provide gate triggering pulse to thyristor T3 and T4. In this time interval we provide gate triggering pulse to thyristor T3 or T4. So T3 and T4 get turned on and behave like a closed switch. So current flow we always know that current always flow from positive toward negative terminal. So in this time current follow the path supply voltage T3 thyristor load T4 thyristor and back to the supply voltage. It means current follow this loop. When current follow this loop in this time interval T3 or T4 thyristor will be turned on and current flow from B toward A. This is the reverse direction of the current because previously we considered that when current flow from A toward B this is the difference direction and current is positive. But this time current flow from B toward A in reverse direction. So current is negative this time. And what about the output voltage? Output voltage is also negative minus Vs. Because this time terminal B is positive with respect to A. Because current flow from B toward A and current always flow from positive terminal toward negative terminal. So B is positive with respect to A. That is why output voltage is also negative. And the magnitude of output voltage is Vs. Because the overall supply voltage appear across the load side. So now we draw the output voltage wave from at instant T by 2 to T. This time interval. At this time interval here we see. T3 and T4 thyristor will be turned on and output voltage across load is minus Vs. In this way we draw the output voltage waveform. This time what about output current? Output current is also negative because current flow from B toward A. So current is also negative and the magnitude of output current is minus Vs by R because we know that I equal to V upon R. So this time 
द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ आउटपुट करेंट इज माइनस वी एस बाय आर नाउ अगेन आफ्टर टी आफ्टर दिस टाइम ड्यूरेशन अगेन टी वन एंड टी टू थाई रिस्टर विल बी टर्न ऑन बिकॉज वी प्रोवाइड ट्रिगरिंग पल्स टू टी वन और टी टू थाई रिस्टर एंड वी रिमूव ट्रिगरिंग पल्स फ्रॉम टी थ्री और टी फोर थाई रिस्टर सो दिस टाइम इंटरवेल टी थ्री और टी फोर थाई रिस्टर विल बी टर्न ऑफ अगेन द आउटपुट वोल्टेज इज पॉजिटिव एंड इक्वल टू द सप्लाई वोल्टेज दैट इज इक्वल टू वी एस एंड वॉट अबाउट आउटपुट करेंट दिस टाइम आउटपुट करेंट इज ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू वी एस बाय आर सो दिस इज द कंटिन्यूस साइकिल अगेन 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 दिस साइकिल विल बी रिपीटेड हियर वी सी द आउटपुट वोल्टेज एंड आउटपुट करेंट इज आइडेंटिकल इट मीन्स द आउटपुट वोल्टेज वेब फॉर्म एंड आउटपुट करेंट वेब फॉर्म इज सिमिलर टू ईच अदर बिकॉज हियर वी यूज रजिस्टिव लोड इन द सर्किट वेन एवर वी यूज रजिस्टिव लोड इन एनी सर्किट द आउटपुट वोल्टेज एंड आउटपुट करेंट वेब फॉर्म इज सिमिलर बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ रजिस्टिव लोड देयर इज ए जीरो फेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन आउटपुट वोल्टेज एंड आउटपुट करेंट वेब फॉर्म करेंट एंड वोल्टेज हैविंग अ लीनियर रिलेशनशिप इन केस ऑफ रजिस्टिव लोड देयर इज नो फेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन आउटपुट वोल्टेज एंड आउटपुट करेंट वेब फॉर्म इन एनी सर्किट इफ वी यूज आर लोड आउटपुट वोल्टेज एंड आउटपुट करेंट वेब फॉर्म इज आइडेंटिकल हियर इफ वी यूज रजिस्टर द करेंट एंड वोल्टेज इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू ईच अदर इफ करेंट इंक्रीजेस वोल्टेज ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस इफ करेंट डिक्रीजेस वोल्टेज ऑल्सो डिक्रीजेस सो दिस इज द कंप्लीट वेब फॉर्म ऑफ सिंगल फेज फुल ब्रिज इन्वर्टर विथ रजिस्टिव लोड नाउ वी डू द एनालिसिस ऑफ द सर्किट so for analysis of circuit here we calculate the average value of output voltage and output current uh, so the average value of output current we calculate with the help of this formula area divided by base so here we see this is the output voltage wave form here we calculate the area of the output voltage so here we calculate area and this is the base we know that this base is 0 to t by 2 so this complete base is t by 2 so how to calculate area integration 0 to t by 2 vs dt divided by base is t by 2 when we calculate this we get 2 by t this t by 2 is come here 2 by t vs integration 0 to t by 2 dt after integrating this we get t by 2 so we put here t by 2 so the complete expression is 2 by t vs t by 2 so 2 to cancel t t cancel we have only the supply voltage vs so the average value of output voltage is equal to supply voltage vs now average value of output current so we know that i equal to v upon r so to calculate i average we use v average divided by r so here we calculate the out, out average value of output voltage that is equals to vs and r so this is the value of average value of output current so in this way we calculate the average value of output voltage and output current now we calculate rms value of output voltage and current rms value means the root mean square value root mean and square value of output voltage so mean i have already calculated here mean means average average value so average value is calculated with the help of this formula it means it means this complete value is the mean value so we have to root of this value and then square of this value if we do root and square of the average value we get rms value of output voltage so here we do this is the average value or mean value of output voltage then we do root of this value and square so after calculating this we get 2 by t v square s integration 0 to t by 2 dt and the integration of 0 to t by 2 dt is t by 2 so now solve this equation t t cancel 2 2 cancel root of v square s so square and root is cancel we get vs so rms value of output voltage is also equal to vs 
नाउ आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट करें हाउ टू कैलकुलेट आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट करें वी नो दैट आई आर एम एस इज इक्वल टू वी आर एम एस डिवाइडेड बाई आर हियर वी कैलकुलेट वी आर एम एस वैल्यू आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट बोलते दैट इज इक्वल टू वी एस डिवाइडेड बाई आर सो दिस इज द आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट करें सो टू डू एनालिसिस ऑफ एनी सर्किट We have to calculate the average value of output voltage and current, and we have to calculate the RMS value of output voltage and current. So in this way, we calculate the average and RMS value of output voltage and current. So hope you like the video. For more interesting video, please like, subscribe, and share my channel. And for notes, please visit my website. The link of the website I will give in my description box that is www.quick-learn.in so keep watching keep visiting and keep sharing my videos bye bye